it, it, it almost seems hopeless. Like, how can you counter this, as Matt says, this overwhelming tidal wave of stupidity? <laughs> yeah, it's, it should be common sense, right? Common sense, you don't want, <laughs> you don't want the PLA in your critical infrastructure. Uh, and it's not just gantry cranes, guys. It's the trains. Um, it is uh, prison systems that use communications from communication systems from China. It's our police departments, our, it's our fire departments, it's banks, it's hotels, uh, it's our grocery stores, our hospitals. Uh, the list goes on and on. And, and I talk about that in the book and I tell some illustrative stories so the reader can kind of get a sense of just how fundamentally uh, compromised actually our society is and just how much leverage China's government has and what a big deal this is and how we need to change the way we do business. I mean, essentially, China's military, China has already invaded America. Digitally, yes. Digitally, yes. And in terms of products, hard, hardware, software, uh, apps, yeah, they're already in our homes and in all of our communities. Hey, TikTok. Yeah. TikTok is a, is a great example of that, right? You've had over 100 million downloads of, of TikTok in America. And TikTok's parent company works for the Chinese Communist Party. And, you know, they develop Total Xinwen, which is meant to manipulate the news. It's a, it's a censorship <laughs> algorithm. It's very, very powerful. It's backed by the state. And now Americans have willingly put that into their lives. A lot of Americans, especially teenagers. And, you know, studies that have been done by researchers who I footnote in the book uh, have looked at the fine print for what Americans are signing on to when they download Totel, uh, oh, excuse me, when they download uh, the subsidiary of, of uh, Totel, when they download TikTok. Um, and what they're signing on to is the hemorrhaging of their own personal private information, their voice print, their face print, and all their data on their phone. Yeah, actually, s someone asked us uh, the other day, like, are you, you know, are you guys going to go to VidCon at the end of June? And it's I'm a, like- a YouTube conference. Yeah. But but that YouTube conference is presented by TikTok, which is a Chinese yeah. company. I mean, it, the conference like, is not put on by TikTok, but they're like the main sponsor. Right. So like, like of course, we weren't invited. Well, just like ha hackers, for example. Um, like the no 90s movie or the people? No, like the, the, the uh, hackers conferences in wow. the United States, uh, DEF CON, for example, in, in it used to be in Las Vegas. Sometimes they still host it in Las Vegas. It's a really big deal for the hacker community and, uh, you know, the, the, the best and the brightest geeks and, and, um, and techies out there. They'll go to this and you'll have NSA there. You'll have Department of Homeland Security there recruiting um, and you'll have hackers from around the world that will get together there. Uh, cybersecurity companies, of course. Well, that that event was actually bought out by Baidu, oh, which of God. course is mm -hmm. was controlled by China's government. And so the the last one of the last big uh, hacker conventions in the world before the pandemic hit was hosted in Beijing. And then you had the Chinese military there and Chinese intelligence services there actively recruiting hackers in California. And from Silicon Valley to, to join them in their efforts. Mm. And, and people had no idea who they're dealing with. They thought, well, this is, they're just normal companies like us. But again, these are not actual companies. These are fronts for the regime. If anyone should be able to figure that out, it should be the hackers. Mm. You, you would think so. You would think so. But apparently hackers may, may be really good at the digital world maybe a little less well-educated on the political world. But again, who are we to blame them if our own leading politicians in the U.S. government, the State Department and, and elsewhere, you know, these are some of the best and the brightest minds in the foreign policy space, even if they're being suckered <laughs> into these arrangements with the Chinese Communist Party. Um, you know, even the U.S. military, you never think of the U.S. military as being full of naive people. You don't think of generals and admirals as being naive, right? You think of them as being very hard, no, you know, very hard headed and smart and pragmatic. But actually, even the US military is getting a lot of its supplies from China. That's I mean, that tells me we really need to focus on more diversity and inclusivity in the military. That's the biggest problem. Uh, Ian, how do we wake up? 
Well, I think drink your coffee from a mug. (laughs) I'll tell you, uh, when I wake up in the morning, it's with a (laughs) cup of coffee in this mug. No, I I would say, uh, you know, at the end of the day, it comes down to public education. And I'm biased, of course, because that's the space that that I live in. Um, But I do. I think that matters a great deal. We need to educate the American public. So if everybody watches China Uncensored and listens to China Unscripted, uh, I think we'll be in a much, much better place. Well, thank you for joining us, Ethan. Like the- Ethan? <laughs> Let's try that again. I need We've my, I need my comment. You're going to be the first years. person to call me Ethan, Chris. <laughs> uh, Chris is just so so depressed well, now. I, I, I am. <laughs> well, also, I'm depressed because there, there was, there's still so much that uh, – I wanted to talk to you about, like in the book, like China's uh, expanding military bases around the world, what they're doing in the Pacific. There's uh, your book is chock full. This could be of another podcast. We could do a sequel. We could, and people should also read the book. I to volunteer. get all the stuff. Yeah, if you guys want to do part two at some point, I'd, I'd be delighted to do it. Either up there in the bunker uh, where you guys are in the woods, or or down here in Virginia. So I'd be happy to do another one. Well, fantastic. I like to, I like to hear that. Uh, yeah, because there is, there is seriously a lot we did not have time to really get into. So much. Uh, and especially like, it just kind of paints a picture of how China is really trying to dominate the global supply chain. If they take Taiwan, if they have all this influence in the Pacific, and the, the military the- bases on the South China Sea, military bases around the world, cranes in the U.S. and U.S. ports, they will have total control over global shipping. <laughs> oh, the Belt and Road. And also telecommunications, right? I mean, Huawei yeah. and ZT is everywhere. Uh, China Which is a grid. huge part of Belt and Road. Oh, absolutely. And also the utility providers. So China Grid is is providing electricity to, to countries around the world from Australia to the Philippines to countries across Africa and South America. Um, ZT and, and Huawei just dominate uh, countries around the world. Um, and the list just goes on and on. They're, they're getting into every uh, every place they possibly can to make people dependent on Beijing. I mean, and that's that's to me kind of the point of of your book that China, China's goal is world domination, international communism, and they are doing a great job at <laughs> making that happen. <laughs> it's 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 basically a puff piece for this for the Chinese Communist Party. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because we. I mean, it's it, not looking good. <laughs> no, it, no, it, it I, is. It's very disquieting. I mean, I think readers. I, I know from people who I've, I've spoken to and listening to you guys. Uh, you do read this book, um, and I certainly felt this way when I was writing it, and you, you it's dark. It's a dark story. It's a scary story. It's not what I intended when I set out with the, the project. I, I thought it would be much more optimistic, much more upbeat, but that's not what I discovered um, as, I, as I worked on this. But at the end of the day, there are things that our policymakers can do that Congress can do, that the White House can do uh, to put us on a much better path. And I also talk about that in the last chapter of the book. And so I'm worried about where we are today, but I'm optimistic about the future if we do take the threat seriously. You know, if, if we continue to convince ourselves that we're exceptional and the president has this emergency um, miracle button in a vault in the White House and every time we face another Nazi Germany or Cuba Missile Crisis or anything like that. We can just hit the <laughs> hit the miracle button, um, and no sacrifice required, and no investments required, no reforms, no painful decisions required on our part. Um, I think if we continue to have that kind of mentality, and if we continue to have wishful thinking about China, um, then we're going to be in for a world of hurt. And so I, I think that's why it's so important that uh, again. People need to, I hope they do, educate themselves and our policy makers and our leaders across all sectors of American society, um, I hope will act accordingly and start to, to, to reform. So where can people follow you and pick up a copy of the book? Oh, absolutely. So if, if you're interested, please do. It's it's on Amazon. It's on you know, Barnes & Noble has it on their website. Uh, independent booksellers sell it. The publisher is a wonderful independent bookseller, K 
Camphor Press, uh, Eastbridge Books, uh, published it. They're a wonderful team. So if you want to support a small independent publishing house that focuses on East Asia and that believes in freedom of the press and freedom of expression, counter-authoritarian, then uh, please go directly to their website uh, at camphorpress.com. Uh, and please consider following me. Uh, I'm on Twitter. And uh, my work is also uh, published quite regularly at the Project 2049 Institute. Well, thanks again, Ian. It's been great having you on. And yeah, I guess we'll have to get you on soon for part two. I would be delighted to do that. Love to continue the conversation. Thank you, guys. Really appreciate it. Wow. People really are stupid, I guess. They like a good deal, Chris. But they, why don't they see what this is inevitably leading to? Because I think most people don't think about, you know, that we're locked in a global struggle with an authoritarian regime. But China's not <laughs> like, communist anymore. Uh, They're just like us. We they got it make with the money. Soviet Union. Why don't we get it with China? Well, I mean, messaging for the government. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, like a lot of pop popular culture was about the Cold War, during the Cold War, right? Yeah. And also it was, I think, a lot more visible, like the Iron Curtain, like the things that are happening, not just in the Soviet Union, but what they were doing around the world. Cuba, that was a big threat to the U.S. You know what I mean? Like there was things that seemed more immediate and threatening. China, it seems like, well, look, at they have all these great cities and they make a lot of products. And, yeah, you I mean, know. I guess like if China stationed nukes in Cuba, that would be very clear. But the Chinese military controlling cranes and in ports, that doesn't have the same kind of, you know. Yeah. Like a Even though it is just, it can be just as devastating to the country. Well, I mean, nuclear weapons. It, but complete supply chain collapse. Yeah, if 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 an enemy controls our ports, our prisons, the communication uh, for our hospitals. for our hospitals and police and fire departments, uh, and our power grid, I I would say that the like the loss of life will like it'll be real. There'll be a real loss of life, but it won't be so obviously connected. It won't be so extreme and visually shocking I as mean, like a nuclear war. I, th I think it would be a catastrophic loss of life. It just oh, won't oh, be yeah. a gigantic crater and explosion. Right. So, you know, it's, so there's really nothing to worry about. I mean, I, I just think that for the average American person, you can't really blame them. The U.S. military buying products from the Chinese them. military, should, that yeah, seems that's, especially that's, bad. That's stupid. Yeah, That's really stupid. But it's like Ian mentioned, like, you know, the Pentagon knows the risks of China, China's essentially state making the cranes in our ports. That's a problem. But they only have one vote. Yeah. I mean, we've we've had people on this show who, you know, are retired U.S. military because uh, active duty people typically like it's very hard to get them on. But like like the people we've interviewed, like they're very clear headed at but a lot of times they'll say things like, oh, you know, I was in the U.S. Navy intelligence for like decades and I kept saying China is a huge threat. China is a huge threat. And it only gets so far up because ultimately it's the civilian government, the White House, that's like, yeah, but don't talk about that. But, oh, we're not going to fund that. We're going to move ships from Asia to Europe or like, you know, this kind of thing. Yeah, Clint Clinton's whole thing about how, you know, we'll... Oh, he really screwed us. You know, what's interesting about Clinton's whole idea that opening our uh, like economy, like opening up China's economy will make them more like us. It worked exactly the opposite way. Exactly. Yeah. Like we are so vulnerable to a global communist takeover. Yeah. But we're also like, we, I think your point is like, we've become more authoritarian and like more like censorship happy, that sort of thing like more like the way China does it than the way that America did it before is kind of what you're saying. Is that the point you were making? Right? Well, is it, yeah, we are being influenced culturally by the Chinese Communist Party. The way that we thought that we were going to culturally influence uh, the Chinese regime and make it, you know, democratic and free. Yeah, what Ian was saying about like the first man. 
that's a, a fantastic example. Well, I do think that that also has an echo. I mean, that's not all of the CCP. There's like there are people in the U.S. who think that about the U.S. Right. So it, there's that's an true. audience for it. And I mean, that is something that was pushed by the Soviet Union and now by China. So definitely this view of like, oh, you shouldn't show like patriotic symbols. America is actually really evil. That's been weaponized against us. Yeah, that has. I mean, of course, like the flip side is there are Chinese people inside China who believe in freedom and, and you know, a democracy led by the people. Like there are a lot of people I believe that, that, that think that way, but their voices are completely suppressed in China, right? Whereas in the US, because we already have this freedom, your view that America is the worst country and should have less freedom is allowed to be uh, spoken freely and even celebrated. And I'm not saying we should take away people's freedom of speech, but it's just like, there are people with all sorts of different views in different countries, but it's only in the, in the small number of countries in the free world where you can actively express those things. So like, of course, you know, dictatorships all say, oh, like our system is the best. And then some Americans say that that's the best too, right? So you have like this, this, there's a force behind it. Does that make any sense? Well, you actually did manage to give me a little bit of hope after all this, because, uh, you know, inside China, there are people who are resisting in whatever way they can. And the Chinese Communist Party is, you know, despite their success at uh, taking over the world because of our own ineptitude, they are also pretty inept in their own ways. And like their economy runs on debt. No one saw uh, the Soviet <laughs> Union collapse. Yeah, yeah, I mean, there and it happened. There and are so, weaknesses. Well, yeah, there are weaknesses, and like it could just happen one day that like internal things just make the Communist Party collapse, and then like all these systems that they've developed around the world, like it won't matter. But the, you know, we could help that along by not pumping money into their system. Yeah. Like not pumping billions of dollars into their system constantly. Yeah, that would, that would help. But yeah. But, but you know, like when China's economy was doing well, like in the 2000s, it was kind of like they were growing fast. Like, okay, well, that seems like a good time to put money into China. But now- <laughs> With, with the COVID lockdowns and their economy is really, really struggling. It's like, well, now is a good time to invest in China also because the prices are low and you can only go up from here. So yeah. it's, a, it's a great deal no matter when. We were trying to end on a note of hope. Yeah, and my hope is that I can invest money in China and make lots of money. Okay, so that, that does give me hope again because maybe it'll collapse completely unrelated to anything we do because we're idiots. And then everyone who has put a lot of money and really gotten close to the regime will just be so absolutely screwed. And then we can launch them into space. That's hope. That, that went in just such a different direction. Like into the sun, into space. Not like a seed ship. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, this is this is a great example of how if you listen to the end of China Unscripted, it inevitably goes so far off the rails. We had just... so many opportunities to end it before this. So many. <laughs> well, it's, it's that there will be justice in this world. The, 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 the arc of like it bends towards justice. The arc of history is long, but it bends towards justice. Yeah. yeah. Let's hope. Because otherwise, if China takes over the world, we are really screwed. Uh, thank you for supporting China Unscripted. Uh, you can buy merchandise at chinauncensored.tv slash merchandise or support us on Patreon and Locals. Good Lord, we need the help. 